Justin Cook here, uh, Innovation Engineer at 360 Yield Center. And uh, I've just had the enjoyable uh, experience of working on lots of neat projects over the years. And today we're gonna talk about Bandit. Um, it looks simple when you first look up, walk up to it, but there's actually quite a bit of uh, engineering and work that's gone into solving some, some problems. And uh, we're gonna walk through some of those today as we look at uh, this simple but not so simple product called Bandit. You really need banded nitrogen on the planter pass because those first um, three, four weeks when you're going through the, the, the cool down and the heat up cycles of immobilization and mineralization, that plant can't miss a day when it doesn't have nitrogen. And so having a concentrated band on either side of the planter pass is really valuable and it's just a great insurance policy. So this nitrogen band that we apply, you know, concentrated bands, just a, a few inches either side of the planter pass, shallow. It's, it's, a, it's UAN is what we typically apply. It's urea, ammonium, and, and, and nitrate. Only a quarter of it is, is usable, the nitrate. Three quarters of it has to mineralize over. So what we want is it, it's, we want it uh, shallow so that the water takes it down. We want it shaded so that the sun doesn't expose the urea to cause it to outgas and lose nitrogen. And we want it to be staged so that as the rain events happen, the water carries the, the nitrogen down into the root zone so that as the plant's growing from emerging all the way up through V6 to V8, there's a consistent gift that just keeps giving of nitrogen into this, into this critical uh, stage of the plant's life. So to summarize, we just don't want the, the plant to ever have a bad day and we don't want to do any damage to your planter pass. And we've spent a lot of time thinking about that, of the various details that have to be cared for so that you don't have a bad day. We don't want to mess with your wallet. We don't want to mess with your downforce. We don't want to mess with your soil. We don't want to mess with your planter. We don't want you to ever have to push in your clutch to clean out a problem and take care of a problem. That was not um, a straightforward, easy thing to do. A lot of engineering time and a lot of iterations went into that. The Bandit product is a unit that mounts between the frame of your row unit and your closing system. It has two coulters that create a trench and into that trench there's two flexible hose guides that direct the, the, the dual flow of, of nitrogen on either side of your planter pass down into that small trench and then is covered as the, as the unit goes by. That's what you see when you're watching a planter go by. But now let's dig a little deeper into the details. So, so in the spirit of, of doing no damage, let's first of all talk about downforce because we do not want to rob downforce from your planter. It, there's, there's too many uh, every time you try to penetrate into the soil, it requires downforce, and there's only a certain amount that's available. And we wanted something that was both light, it did not require a, a high amount of downforce, and something that was also very flexible in the sense that as conditions change, the unit is robust, and it doesn't, and it keeps doing its job even when the conditions are changing. That could be things like different tillage conditions, you could have conventional till or no-till. It could be different um, cover crops. It could be different soil types, different planter depths. There's many things that can create uh, a, a new requirement for downforce. And we wanted a system that was robust and low in the amount of, of downforce that was required. To do that, we came up with, um, first of all, a, a system that had spring-loaded arms. And secondly, we used a coulter that was um, sharp, and, and at the proper angles so that we got good penetration without a whole lot of force. And again, we're just trying to create a small trench a shallow. Shallow is good because every quarter of an inch that you go deeper into the soil, it just takes more force. We also know that the planter, um, you plant at different speeds, at different soil conditions, and we wanted a system that was robust in the sense of of not kicking up a lot of soil and rooster tails 
So you look at it, it looks simple, but we spent a, quite a bit of time getting the right toe angle, the right camber, and getting the, the, um, the angle of those um, coulters in such a way that they do their job, they take very little force, and they don't send out a lot of soil um, causing other issues. And, and, a, and a trench that's easy to cover with the chains that come in behind. The two coulters are mounted to two spring-loaded arms. Those arms are heat treated and they are um, properly designed with the right radiuses and the right heat treats so that we don't get fatigue cracks. And they allow the coulters to, to spring up and down. We've incorporated three different spring settings into those into the spring tension for those arms. Your conditions change from, from full tillage, conventional tillage, to no-till, to cover crops, to different planting depths. And depending on where you are for your particular application, you'll need to, to set those at the right spring setting. And we've made that very easy to do. We run the nitrogen through a steel braided flexible hose that goes down into an over-molded hose guide that directs the nitrogen downward, into, right into the trench. It's flexible and it's designed in terms of its, it's a movement that it always, as, as objects go by, it always continues to, to point and direct the stream of nitrogen right into the trench. One really cool feature that we had to solve was just the, uh, the, the, the cover chains. We, you naturally put some kind of steel bracket to spread out the chain so that it covers a fairly wide band to make sure that the, the, the dual trenches are, are covered with soil. But what we found was that as you were going high speeds and catching on things, the spring would, the, the chain would spring and, and load and, and, and throw itself back onto the row unit and catch in the spiked wheels. So we had to solve that problem. And we did it in a really cool way. Um, you naturally have your first brackets that give you the spread, but on top of that, we put hinged steel plates. And they're in such an angle that when the, when the chain is down low, it gives it the proper spread. And then when the chain tries to spring up, those plates actually move outward. And as it does, the length of the chain restricts it on how far it can move up. So that prevented it from being able to flip up and catch on, on your closing spiked wheels. The structure itself that, that is mounted to the row unit and then carries the closing system has some engineering as well. Um, the, the loading condition while we're planting is actually quite easy. It doesn't require a lot of strength. The, the, the greater strength is required when the planter is lifted and the, the, the planter is bouncing in the field during your turns or just getting from one point to the next in the field. And the, the weight of the closing systems, which are getting heavier by the day, um, as those are bouncing, that puts uh, put quite a bit of load onto the, just the, the structure, the frame of the bandit unit. So that's, that's ribbed, and we use a high strength, low alloy, um, all just so that your bandit unit lives for the full life of the product. In addition to strength, the structure needed to be short. We don't want to affect your transport width while you're, while you're moving your planter down the road. So as you can see, there's a lot more than meets the eye when you look at this fairly simple product. A lot of engineering has gone into it so that you can be putting banded nitrogen in the right place at the right time without any pain to your planter operation.